Our high school preview part of the Palmetto Dugout show today, we got Coach Freeman from Southside. Christian, what's going on, Coach? Uh, doing good. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, we appreciate you uh, jumping on the show with us today. Um, also have Sammy. So me and Sammy are going to tag team this one. Um, so let's start out by talking about you're the defending 1A state champs. Let's talk about some of those crucial guys you lost last year as well as that journey to that game. Yeah, well, we had uh, we had nine seniors last year and uh, they all had roles, um, you know, whether it be being in, you know, heart of the order, hitting 10, 11 home runs or whether it was in a leadership role and just, you know, setting uh, the culture in practice. So we're going to miss all nine of them. Um, I guess on the field, the uh, the biggest loss is the heart of the order. Um, our three, four, five hitters all graduated um that was a bulk of our home runs and so you know that's uh that's going to be a challenge we're going to miss those guys uh but uh I think we can we can find some new ways to score runs yeah no doubt um that was a, a solid team you had there part of the you got nine seniors part of the reason you win a state championship there um so yeah that's that's gonna be difficult to replace but with the program you have I know you can do it just spending time watching games with you guys yeah, it's uh, obviously losing nine seniors kind of a uh, kind of a little bit of blow. So we'll, we'll get the uh, no pressure. We get to see what kind of coach you are this year. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, getting, getting some of those those young guys now. Obviously, kind of losing those mm. nine guys. Obviously, it's a it's a big you know big blow a little bit. But you kind of obviously returning some guys. Talk about some guys that you're returning this year's club that that kind of played a big part in the team last yeah. year. Obviously, losing nine guys. There's probably not a ton of returners that were in there, but just talk about a little bit of some of your guys that were, uh, you know, kind of everyday guys, whether on the mound or, or, or in the field for you. Yeah. Yeah. We actually, I mean, we, like I said, all nine of those seniors played different roles, but we actually have a lot of starters back. Um, we, uh, we only lost, I think 18 innings off the mound. Um, so not, not a lot of those seniors were pitchers. So I think every playoff inning, um that we had on the mound is back so that's obviously going to be a strength um we have uh you know Carson Bowman a freshman um that you guys are well aware of we have Nelson Vaughn and George Massengill on the mound who were uh two of our other starters last year uh we're also excited about getting Colby Sintel back he's a left-handed um junior who uh was um, had surgery last year at the beginning of the of the year and was never 100%. He was a, a big uh, part of our success the year before. And so getting him back is exciting. Um, and one senior that we're getting back, Tyler Haroff, had shoulder surgery last year from a football injury, and we're getting him back. So i um, excited to get some guys back healthy and uh, really excited about all that we have coming back on the mound. No yeah, doubt. You, Obviously, you got a you got a young guy like Carson on there. It's uh, it, it, it's it's special, right? I mean, yeah. he's got a chance to uh, he's got a chance to you know, continue to develop to be one of the the better left handed pitchers, better pitchers that like really ever come through the state of South Carolina. Right. If he continues to progress in that way, so you got a young man like him, it's uh, it makes life a little bit easier on you. You just Definitely. give him the ball and say, "Go get him." Yeah, and and as great a pitcher as he is, he's just as good of a teammate and kid. Great family, um, comes to work every single day. Um, and I mean, it, you know, sometimes when you see somebody that's that talented from the outside, you may wonder, um, you know, what kind of work ethic they have, what kind of attitude they have, and it just that is um, he he's the full package as far as that goes. And those pitchers, you know, I mentioned Centel, Massengill, Vaughn, those guys push each other. And, um, you know, they they take it as a challenge. When Carson goes out and throws a one-hitter or a no-hitter or strikes out 15, George and Nelly want to go do the same thing their next outing. Um, and Colby will be the same way. So uh, it's, it's a fun um, pitching staff, fun room, and we've played good defense behind them. So that, that's a big part of it as well. Yeah, you talk about Massengill a little bit. I remember being down at Louisville and watching you guys, and, and Bowman pitched a heck of a game that first part of the game, and Massengill came in and nothing dropped off. It yeah. was it was electric there as well, and that's that's something positive moving in that season for you guys because I know you've got a great pitching staff, especially with Bowman at the top. 
Yeah, so let's, George, George and Nelson have both added velo during the offseason as well. And so, um, you know, we've got three guys that will be legit mid-80s. And, um, you know, you can you can win a lot of games with that. Yeah, that's big in 1A baseball. Yeah. Because <laughs> you don't see that much in 1A. Right. Um, so let's talk about some of those top newcomers you got coming, whether they were from JV, transferred in, or just didn't start a lot last year. Yeah, um, really, all, you know, what we have is is back from last year. We do have some uh, some guys that played JV last year that I think we'll need to rely on um, to especially to fill some outfield spots. Uh, I think we have some uh, rising seniors, some seniors now that were role players as juniors last year um, who can can be a big part of our plans. Um, you know, we've got Trey Dowling, his first baseman, left-handed hitter, uh, big, strong guy, plays football. Saunders Hawkins is an outfielder. Will Daniels, an outfielder. They both played football. We've got Tyler Haroff back, who's a senior. Um, he'll be DH, first baseman, could play second if we need him to. Uh, Jay Israel is a potential outfielder and will also help us on the mound um, as, as a senior. And so, um, yeah, just excited about those guys, all the seniors that we have, and the, uh, you know, really good junior class as well that uh, performed for us last year. So It'll be exciting to see those guys yeah. come up through the we ranks. Also, uh, Sam Hain is another senior outfielder that we have who uh, has been with us, been in the program a long time, who uh, can help us this year as well. So six seniors this coming season. Not as many as last year, so no, that's right. <laughs> Losing nine will hurt you, <laughs> but yeah. six yeah. six is okay. We'll, we'll that's probably have average. a smaller. We'll have a smaller varsity roster this year, which is fine. A little easier to manage, yeah. um, but and, and really kind of looking forward to that, honestly. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. Now we we've talked to a couple coaches that that have talked about obviously coming after you guys um, in the in the area. Some some teams that have said you know. You guys are obviously at the pinnacle. They want to kind of get to where you are. Now, what are some, you know, obviously bouncing back, you know, coming off the state championship, right? Like, obviously, the target's on your back. But expectations for you guys, some things that you guys talk about in your program, what what are some things that, like, looking forward into the year, some of your expectations you're looking forward yeah. to? Well, you know, I've, we've already talked this fall with our guys um, about just the fact that it, it's hard to get to the top and it's even harder to stay there. I mean, you look back at the number of uh, teams who have repeated uh, over the years and it just, you know, it, it doesn't happen that often. It, it You look at like uh, Kip Herlong at Lakeview who won a lot in a row and, you um, you know, those those are less and less common. And so we do get everybody's best shot every time. Uh, it is a challenge. Um, you know, last year, kind of our mantra through the year, we broke every huddle down with the word finish because we had gotten to the state championship the year before. We lost to Lakeview and uh, just wanted to finish the job. And so we were able to do that. And um, this year we – uh, I think our, our slogan is going to be keep climbing. Just, you know, we have not reached the pinnacle. We want to keep working and, um, you know, make ourselves better regardless of who's in the other dugout, regardless of who we're playing. Yeah, it's it's like you said, it's always that the second year is probably the hardest one. You know, you, right. you know, I heard a great one, you know, when uh, way back in the day, Skip Burtman used to talk about the, Winning the first one's hard, but the second one's the hardest thing, you know, because mm -hmm. you, you know yeah. the players, the players kind of think ah, we're we're the best, you know, you know, and, and it's you, a whole, you get a it's good a whole group new and it team. makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, it's a whole new team. It's a whole new, just the way everybody fits together. And you know, there were even in last year's season, there were stretches where we weren't playing that well. We, um, you know, kind of went through the motions for a few games and really had to challenge our guys. I felt like they really locked in and clicked when the playoffs came and really got focused. You could just tell a difference in even the way they stretched um, before the game. And so um, just taking care of the little things like that and knowing um, – I know when I coached at Malden, we won the state championship in 2004 – we came back in 2005. It was hard to get everybody's attention for a Tuesday night non-region game in, in March, you know, because they they remember the state championship atmosphere. They want to get back there. But you've got to go through those, you know, dull times of the season or you're not going to make it. And so 
um, that's going to be a challenge this year is just staying focused. Yeah, and you, let's. I want to jump in with something here. So your, your region has changed a little bit. It's still familiar with you. So right. You got you got some big rivalry games in the region now. So how is that going to be this year? Because you got Christchurch and St. Joe coming down from two A into your region. Right. Yeah, and they were good two A teams. I mean, St. Yes. Joe's was one of the final four or six teams I think left in um, in two A last year. Christchurch made a good run in the playoffs and. Um, and yeah, we've played them every year non-region, um, but it typically has not been best on best because, you know, it's a third game of the week and you need to save pitching for your region game. So it will be good to play those guys when, um, you know, we're throwing our ace against their ace and, and that, you know, they've got, they've got really good arms as well. And so uh, it'll be a challenge. I mean, I know um, there's some really good regions in the lower state, you know, I think about, uh, Lakeview and yeah. uh, Green Sea Floyd and Johnsonville, that region is is really solid. But I think I would put our region up against any region in the state, you know, with us, St. Joe's and Christ Church all together. Yeah, I was going to say it's arguably the best region in 1A baseball, mm -hmm. in my opinion, right. based off what I've seen so far from those three schools in terms mm -hmm. of talent-wise. Um, it's like when I was in high school at Louisville, we were 1A as well, and we were having to play outside Christ Church and St. Joe, and it was like, gosh. It was tough every game you played with them, yeah. um, but it was great. Um, so, yeah, that'll be a, a definitely a fun region to watch. We, I can't, since y'all are in my neck of the woods, can't wait to see those games play out. Yeah. Um, well, and Coach, we, we – The way our schedule ahead. works is, is we are playing them Thursday, Friday um, games, so back-to-back -back okay. nights. Um, I mean, travel is not really an issue because we're right yeah. down the road, but, uh, you know, we'll – it, it will – It'll test the depth of the pitching a little bit and, and just um, be a little bit more of a full team picture of who's better, I think, than playing them once and then playing them again a month later. Yeah, that's the back to back games will help too, because that, that yeah. tells you who the better team is at that point. Right. Um, which is good. Plus, I think I it's neat too. You guys are, you said it, you're right there. You're right across the street yeah. pretty much for each other. I mean, that, right. that makes it. That's the beauty of high school baseball, right? You get the the, mm -hmm. the nice rivalries that are close, and, and it makes it, you know, a short bus trip down the road, and you go, you know, you go battle against your, uh, you know, your your friends, your teammates. The community knows all the kids, and makes it special for those guys. That's right. Yeah. Well, coach, we enjoy, uh, we appreciate you having having you on the show today. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for what you do for uh, for high school baseball. We. Love seeing you in the stands and appreciate y'all's coverage. I know our players enjoy reading it. And, um, yeah, keep up the good work. We appreciate that. We, we look forward that. to getting out to see you this spring. Um, know you're going to have a lot of talent out there. So we we look forward to that big time. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Yes, sir. No problem. Thank you. All right.